Hi! Um, okay, so I wanted to make a video um, about my gastroscopy that I had today. I know in uh, where I live it's called a gastroscopy, but in some places it's called an upper endoscopy or lower, yeah, upper. Um, and I'm not the type of person to make videos. I'm not a, a technological person uh, at all, and I, I, I don't make videos, but I, I wanted to make a video because I, it's a, I know it's a pretty common procedure um, and I know a lot of people if they've never had it before they're freaking out like what's gonna happen and I think not knowing is what causes the most anxiety I think once you know once you know once it's over you're fine it's just it's 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 not even getting it it's just not knowing what's gonna happen and I I myself before I got my um, gastroscopy today I was reading like message boards and watching videos and I think I think um, like if I can help one person to feel better about the procedure they're about to have, then um, I mean, that's why I'm doing it. And um, so my video is gonna be about my positive experience. Thank heavens, I had a really great positive experience. Um, it's not one of those like horror stories that you read about. That actually, there are a lot of people who said they had horror stories, and my heart goes out to anyone who's had a really bad experience. I. I mean, I'm so thankful and grateful that that didn't happen to me and um, my heart goes out to you if it did. Um, so anyways, I, I've been suffering from um, GERD for about a year. Um, you know, heartburn and uh, uh, I can't eat, I've had to cut out chocolate and um, alcohol, not that I drank a lot before, but um, like no wine or tomatoes. Um, so in and I love chocolate and tomatoes, so that was really hard. And coffee, I don't really like coffee, but still, like, you know, it's it's always good to have once in a while. Um, beans, like pea soup, anything of that nature. So I've been on, um, I'm supposed to be on a PPI, but I've been taking an H2 antagonist, like Pepsid, instead, because I don't, I feel like, I don't really like PPIs, um, like the proton pump inhibitors. So... Um, and I was supposed to get the gastroscopy like six months ago, but I've been too freaked out and too uh, scared because I had asthma and um, I was scared about, you know, having something happening and, um, you know, like I didn't know what to expect, so I got freaked out and I'm a pretty nervous person as it is. So, but then um, an opening came up uh, with my doctor at the hospital that he works at and I, I was like, I just got to conquer my fears and do it. So... Uh, so, as you know, you're not supposed to eat, to eat, some doctors say 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, it really depends. Um, but I was told 10 hours, so I, I, my gastroscopy was at 1 today, and so I stopped eating at about 2 a.m. Um, and I, I'm, I, like, it was fine for me to fast this morning when I woke up, because I'm, I usually don't eat in the mornings anyways, because I don't feel hungry until the afternoon. Um, but I wanted to eat, the reason I ate at 2 in the morning is because I talked to a girl who had her gastroscopy and didn't eat for like 14 hours and she said she puked during the gastroscopy, after the gastroscopy, the next day because she didn't eat for so long and so I got freaked out and I was like I'm gonna eat, uh, right at the 10-11 hour mark. So, um, and then you're not supposed to drink anything I think for up to 4 hours before and that was also hard for me because I, I, I always get dehydrated and I drink a lot of water. So, okay, so you, what happens, or at least in my experience, so I got it done at the hospital, not at a, like a, a clinic, because uh, I have asthma and I, I wanted to be in a place where they have the materials available if something happens. So, um, in the very rare event. So, um, okay, so got to the hospital, checked in with the hospital, they sent me up to the gastroscopy wing. Um, I sat in the waiting room and the waiting room with people who were waiting for to pick up their uh, Whoever they came for who had had the gastroscopy. I was freaking out. I was trying not to uh, Freak out, but I didn't sleep really well because I was I kept waking up uh, thinking I was gonna miss my alarm and thinking dreaming that it was already over and and like so I kept waking up and so I didn't sleep really well so I was trying not to freak out, but I wasn't as freaked out as I normally am because I was really tired. So I went in and um, I sat in the waiting room and then I went to the reception desk and I, I started asking them like 
a lot of questions. I was really driving them crazy. They were like laughing at me because I was like, what if this happens? What if this happens? And they were like, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. And a nurse was there and she was like, she was laughing because she was like, a lot of people are freaked out. And then they come out and they're like, oh, it was absolutely nothing. So she was like, you're going you're gonna to be one of those people who's going to come out and you're going to be laughing at how nervous you were. And, and she was right. So I'm in the waiting room. They Then uh, for about 20 minutes, they called my name. They had me go into a, um, like a locker area where I put my bag in. Um, and then I got changed into a gown and a robe. Came back out to the waiting room. Sat there for another uh, 10 minutes. Then they called me in. Um, and a nurse took my vitals, my blood pressure and um, heart rate. And asked me, you know, any questions like, uh, do you have any loose teeth? Do you have asthma? Do you have... Um, uh, blood, high blood pressure, heart problems, uh, you know, things they have to know about. Um, and then I, you know, I told her, like, uh, I have really bad gag reflex. Uh, I told her, just, she asked me if I wanted sedation. I said, absolutely, I want the twilight. I said, I don't just want to be relaxed. I want to be knocked out. Like, I don't want to be awake. And she said, we'll try to give you, like, a higher dose. Um, and, you know, I told her, like, uh, you know, I uh, I told her, like, I got to take my inhalers now to make sure everything's okay with my asthma. So she was really nice. She was really sweet. Um, I was, like, I was so nervous, and I started crying because I was so nervous. And she hugged me, and she was so nice. And then another nurse came over, and she was like, what are you afraid of? You know, tell me what your fears are. And I said, I'm afraid that when I, that I could wake up in the middle, and I'm going to start yelling and screaming and freaking out and pushing someone and, like, um, but I'll, because I'll be under the influence of the sedation, I won't know what I'm doing and I won't be in control. And she, and then I, I, she was like trying to logically, you know, show me how irrational that was. And then, well, not irrational, but you know, how rare that is. And then she was like, you know, some patients do wake up, but we give you an amnesiac so you won't remember it. Um, and we're prepared for the event, for any event, you know, that can happen. And then, um, she said like, what else are you afraid of? And I said, I'm afraid that I won't be able to breathe because of my asthma. Um, you know, and she walked me through every one of my fears and, and she was really like, she was very logical. She was, you know, she said like, you can't live your life in fear. You can't be anxious all the time. You got to, uh, this is for you to feel better. You got to do it. And she was right. And, you know, she hugged me and they were, the nurses were wonderful. Um, so, um, then I went to the, the, uh, then they put me in the recovery unit and I was lying on a gurney uh with the other people who were just waking up and were still in sedate you know sedation who had gotten out um and so they put the IV in and uh I was like freaking out they're like don't worry we're not giving you the medicine yet we're just starting the IV um and uh so then uh then they wheeled me in uh to the room and um by this point, I was a little bit calmer because the nurse, she was like trying to take my mind off it by talking with me and asking me what my favorite TV show is and, um, you know, telling me about um, like herself and asking me questions about, you know, myself. And so she wheels, I wheeled into the room and the nurse who was in there was the first nurse I had talked to who was like, you know, when you come out, you're not, you're going to be laughing at how nervous you are. So I said to the doctor before, to my doctor, because he's the one who did the scope, I said, I don't want to wake up in the middle. I just want to be completely asleep. He's like, I want to be asleep right now. And I said, um, you know, and yesterday, when I saw him yesterday before the, before I had an appointment with him before the, the scope, I said to him, like, what happens if I wake up middle? He's like, I'll just hit you with a sledgehammer and you'll be out. And like, he has a great sense of humor and he was trying to make me feel better with that. So, um, <coughs> so they... So I'm in the room, I see the, the computer screen and the scope, um, and the nurse says, lie on your left side, which everyone has to go on their left side from what I understand, and she's like, I'm going to give you your med, I'm going to give you the, the sedation now, and she puts it into the IV, and I don't remember anything after that, I can literally, like, I don't remember a thing, I went out. Um, I don't remember anything about the procedure. If I woke up, I don't know. Um, I remember being wheeled out. I must have been like, they say it's only like a five minute procedure. I have no clue how long I was in there. I have no clue what happened. Um, 
when I was wheeled out, I, I remember asking them, is that it? Is it over? Did it already happen? Because I don't remember anything. Um, I apparently was wheeled out at 1.40. Um, and the next thing I knew, I woke up in the recovery room and I, sorry about that, and I looked at the clock and it was 2.40. So I slept for an hour and then I felt really like kind of groggy and tired, not like a drug-induced tiredness, like not, not like if you take, uh, I don't know, like a Tylenol or something where you, you know, you feel like you're under a wave or you feel kind of like, um, blacked out, like you don't know, you're not really in control. It wasn't like that. It was just like, it was like if you've only had five hours of sleep and you wake up suddenly and you're like completely out of it and because the phone rings. Like let's say you, you're only sleeping five hours and the phone rings and you wake up and you have a conversation with them while you're still like really asleep, um, but you're still talking. And then later on that day, you're like, did I have a conversation with someone where I said this? And I said, did I actually say that to them? And you kind of remember, but you kind of don't. That was what I felt like. Just like really tired and kind of out of it, but not like a drug induced out of it. And then um, they came up to me, you know, they asked me how I was and they were like, um, you're ready to go. Uh, you know, and uh, because you're, you're out of sedation. And then um, at that point I was still kind of out of it, but I still was able to talk and... Um, you know, uh, have a conversation, and then I went into the change room, got changed into my clothes, um, I met my ride to take me back, and, um, it was a little bit weak, like, when I walked, I felt like, kind of like I was gonna fall over sometimes, and, um, like, my knees were, like, my legs were kind of light, it was like, like, I was walking on air, but overall, the feeling from the sedation was great, like, I felt like I was walking on clouds, um, I told them like whatever the doctor gave me was like the perfect combination for me because I totally went out and don't remember anything. Um, I so I was like, you guys are geniuses, whatever you did, I love you guys. Um, and then I felt really great afterwards. Like I felt like uh, tired, but also really happy and relaxed. And um, yeah, that was it. And I honestly, like, I don't remember anything from the procedure. Um, they took care of me so well. They were so wonderful. Um, I'm glad I did it because, uh, it, it, you know, it was really important, you know, the GERD I've had to, for my treatment plan. Um, and, um, you know, I would say definitely, definitely worth it, at least in my experience, because, um, you know, I made such a, the nurse, the first nurse was right. I made such a big deal over nothing. Um, I mean, yeah, it has risks and it's not, I mean, it's not nothing, but honestly, like if I would have known it was going to be like this, I would have never worked myself up for as long as I did. And, um, my, my throat isn't sore at all. I mean, it's like a tiny little bit. Um, but I suffer from tonsillitis a lot and sore throats, um, a lot and I have asthma so for like, coughing a lot so for me it's absolutely nothing um one thing is after you have it done they 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 don't let you eat or drink for two hours because they give you like a gag reflex numbing spray and they don't want you to choke and it, I was like freaking them out because I <laughs> after I came out of recovery because I have really bad gag reflex and I kept sticking my finger into my throat going oh my gosh like I'm not gagging it's so weird it's so cool like wow this is and they were like like the secretary's like oh my gosh it's so gross what you're doing I was like it's so cool I can't believe it uh it's so freaky that I can do this but um because usually like the toothbrush gives me like a gag reflex brushing my teeth so so that was basically it um I hope that this video puts your mind at ease about the procedure what happened and how it is and um and I hope that everyone has as easy and as um you know stress-free as a um you know afterwards as a procedure as I did and I wish everyone the best of luck and if you have any questions let me know bye